Okay, so today we're going to look at Photoshop for Creative Cloud and we're going to look at how Photoshop is able to do 3D printing and some of the things that you need to think about when you are starting to print in 3D. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the 3D file. Now it's an STL file and part of the STL file contains the size of the object that we're going to print or how it was initially created. And You can see that clearly here and the 3D units. It's quite big, but we'll change that later. So press OK and it'll bring the file in. The first thing we notice is the object is actually the wrong way up. It's actually on its side and I'd like it so it's vertical. To get it vertical, I'm just going to change the view. I'm going to go to this view. Now this view is the top view. So you can see it's laying down, we're seeing it from that's seeing it from that point of view. Now ideally I want to print it on its base upwards. So what I need to do is just move this view into the main view. You can now see the ground plane and the object. If I click on the object, I get the cage. I can grab the navigator and rotate around the axis that I need to rotate it on and rotate the model around. I'm actually looking for these edges of the cage to make sure they are lined up to each other. And if I move it, you can see there that there's no, I can't see the other edges, so it's nice and square. I then need to put this onto the ground plane. So I can just say 3D, move object to the ground plane, and it will basically pull the model up. And you can see that happening on the left hand side in the other view. If I just move the other view into shot, this is a 3D view, it shows me that the model is now stood vertical. I can also look at other views, I can look at the left, right or the top view and see that it's exactly on the horizon line where it needs to be. So we're almost ready to print. However, there are some things we need to think about when we start printing. When a 3D model is printed, it's sliced up from the bottom all the way to the top. The 3D printer will take each slice and lay it down and depending on what type of material you're using, the material needs to dry. For the example today, we're going to be using the cube and we're going to be using PLA. PLA is a plastic, food safe plastic. So the print head will lay down each layer on top of each other. Sounds easy. So we get this base layer, it's nice and thick, It'll lay down a layer here and it'll keep laying down these layers until it gets to about here. Then it'll keep laying these down. This trunk gets a lot larger towards the top. Now that's okay because this actually is self-supported. However, when we get to these spheres, these spheres are actually suspended. There's nothing underneath them that's holding them up. As we're laying down these layers, it will lay down the bottom of the sphere. If there's nothing supporting it, it will fall to the floor and result in a failed print. These objects are hollow. We do need to make sure that when we're printing them that the wall thickness is of a minimum thickness based upon the printer and material that we're printing with. Also, some 3D modeling tools allow you to create these models using polygons. But sometimes the polygons get reversed. If they're the wrong way around or the model's been put together in a bad way, these polygons won't be next to each other when they print and that causes a hole. If you get a hole in a print that can also cause it to fail. What Photoshop does is automatically generate supports or scaffolding to support these spheres or any hanging objects or overhanging objects that we have inside the model. It also looks at the wall thickness and depends on the printer you're using and the material you're using will make sure that the wall is the right thickness. We also look at the model, analyze for holes, any weak areas, and we fix those weak areas as well. So we really take the pain out of 3D printing. Typically, when you're 3D printing, you'd have to wait for the print to fail. Once the print's failed, you can then work out how it needs to be supported, what needs to be fixed in the 3D model. This can take a long time. For example, this model that we're printing today will take about four hours to print. What you really don't want to have to worry about is that two hours into the print, the print starts to fail. That's just going to waste your time and will end up being very frustrating. So 
The object of Photoshop is to enable you to print without having to worry about that. So the version of Photoshop in the Creative Cloud now supports 3D printing and supports creating of the scaffolding, the wall thickness and fixing of the mesh without you having to worry about how to do it. So how do we do it? We go to the scene layer in the 3D panel and we choose print. Now we get a preview of what the model will look like. We can also choose the type of printer we're using here. So we're going to use the uh, 3D Systems Cube. We're going to show in millimeters and we're going to print at a low resolution. Now this is way too big so I'm going to scale to print volume. This will make sure the object will fit into the print chamber. You can see there that you now see the print chamber which is square covering the object. Now it's still a bit too big so I'm going to change it to be about 110 millimeters. And you can still see it fits inside the, the volume chamber and is, is going to take less time to print than the full size model. We can also specify here the support structures and we want to use scaffolding, which we do because we've got these overhanging spheres. Then press print. Print can also be found in the 3D menu as well. And you can see there we built scaffolding and we're building support mechanisms for all of these objects. If we rotate this object, you can see it's created the support structures. So as it's printing the base, it will also print these support structures so that when it gets to these spheres, it's able to print them without the spheres falling off. The next thing we need to do is send it to the cube software to build the raft and get it ready for printing. But before we do that, we have to export this out and bring it through the cube software. So save it to the actual disk on key. And then we launch the cube software. In the cube software itself, notice here we're using PLA as a material. We also have the raft turned on. Let's go see how you just set those up if they're not set to be the right material or the raft isn't set to on. Click on the settings and you can see there that we have the raft turned on, supports turned off because Photoshop generated the supports and the print material of your choice that you need to use. Once you have that set up, you then import the model and you can see the model here we've just saved, it's Jigsaw 2. You can see it asks me if the model is in inches, it's not, it's in millimeters. So I'll say no and it brings it to and you can see there that it's squarely set in the middle of the print chamber. The next thing we need to do is build it from the cube software. So to build it, we hit the build icon and we save this back to the cube as the file name with PLA next to it. Press OK. This will create the objects that the printer will understand. It also gives you an estimate of how long it thinks it will take to print. Now we can take the disk on key and put it into the cube and we can go watch the cube start to print. There's a few things to watch out for, but a, a lot of it is trial and error. Uh, the software does create very good models and very good scaffolding, so the, the print should print. You just need to make sure that your printer is calibrated properly before you go out and do that. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, there you can see the final the final print. So uh, it was great speaking with you today and if you have any questions then please uh, contact me on Twitter at Richard Curtis or uh, you can go to my blog at blogs.adobe.com slash Richard Curtis. Otherwise it's been great. Thanks very much and see you next time. Bye now.